for those who have just joined us, uh, this session will also be live streamed on Facebook, uh, on MDA's Facebook page. Hello, hello everyone who has just joined us. Uh, welcome to MDA's Digital Wednesday. We will be starting uh, real soon while we are admitting a few more coming in. In the meantime, uh, when you're in, some ground rules, uh, kindly uh, mute your speaker if you don't mind. Mute your mic if you don't mind. Thank you. Hello, hi everyone. Welcome to MDA Digital Wednesday. For those who have just joined us, welcome. We are going to be starting soon. But in the meantime, for those who have just logged in, uh, relax, chill. And uh, you can please, if, you, if your mic is on, please uh, turn, uh, turn mute your mic, please. Thank you. Hello everyone who just joined us. Hi, welcome to Digital Wednesday organized by MDA. We will be starting real soon, probably in the next two minutes, we'll kick off. Hello, mm -hmm. hi, thanks for dropping uh, a, a, thank, a high note from uh, Muhammad Faisal. Hello, hi Muhammad Faisal. Hello Azmi, hello Sherry. Hello everyone, for those who have just joined us, if you don't mind, kindly mute your mic. Uh, we'll be starting in a minute's time. Thank you. Hello, Olivia. Hi, Yiling. Good afternoon to you as well. Okay, we will start now uh, as uh, we admit more people coming in. All right, for those who just uh, joined us, welcome to uh, MDA's Digital Wednesday. Uh, this is uh, quite an interesting uh, lineup that we have uh, for this this so-called Quarters Digital Wednesday. As uh, for those who know, uh, we have Digital Wednesday every quarter. Uh, and uh, for this quarter, it's a little bit different. We actually break it down to three days, right? So I'm just gonna talk a bit about that later on. Uh, but in the meantime, I would actually like to, uh, my name is Carlson. I'm actually one of the uh, MDA council members. Uh, but before we, we kick off uh, the speakers for today, I'd like to introduce you to Nicholas, uh, Sagao, our president for MDA, to say a few words, and uh, we'll then, uh, I guess we can kick off from then. So, Nicholas, over to you. 
Hi, good morning, everyone. Let's just uh, adjust slides. Uh, I hope everyone had uh, you know a good morning. Uh, thank you for spending your almost lunch time with us today. Uh, so I'm just gonna like give you a bit of introduction of uh, uh, MDA in case some of you are not aware what we're doing. Uh, and our next slide, please. Okay, so MDA is uh, just continue. Yeah, so just a bit of background. So MDA was formed in 2008. Uh, our mission is, you know, to, like you said, it's here to basically work with the, the industry to sort of shape the, the, the Malaysian digital uh, economy and empower, empowering all types of business. Uh, you know, so we represent uh, quite a bit of companies from different uh, parts of digital. Uh, they're publisher, they are platform owners, uh, they are advertising agency, creative agency, and, and, and so forth. Uh, next slide. Uh, so these are the companies uh, that are, you know, sorry, if, uh, if you can. Hang on, sorry. Yeah. yeah, for those, uh, can you please mute your mic, if you don't mind? Sorry, uh, Jess, can you please uh, monitor that? Thank you. Sorry, Nicholas, ah, okay. over back to you. No worries, no worries, no worries, no worries. Okay. Uh, so these are the companies that are, you know, have just a bit of highlight of the, the members. So you can see a wide range of companies, part of that. Uh, you know, we, we would welcome anyone, you know, all companies to join us. You can uh, ping us up, uh, go to our website, go to our you know, social media to, to find out how to become a member. Uh, so there's a wide range of company, part of that, you know, because the, the goal is we want to make sure that, you know, everyone is involved in shaping and making, uh, you know, uh, you know, uh, the industry better, right? Next one. Next slide. Uh, so in MBA, uh, we're, we, we, we kind of make, keep ourselves busy. Uh, you know, this pillar led by Carson is one of the busiest pillar uh, in, in an activation that we do. Uh, we have the technical governance where we work with the government. Uh, we have the community pillar, which is uh, what we're doing today, uh, you know, Digital Wednesday, and we also have um, a monthly uh, MBA at schools, uh, you know, for our members. Uh, you know, we have also a knowledge pillar where we, where we basically shape and, and drive conversation, uh, you know, uh, across the industry. You know, for example, we talked about cookie-less world, you know, waiting for that to happen, you know, getting everyone ready for that and what should be, what should the industry watch out for, right? These are some of the examples that the talkability that we put together. Uh, and uh, powering innovation is uh, one of our, uh, you know, annual, uh, you know, pillar of event. So D awards, I'll talk about that a little bit later towards the end of the slide. Uh, we have that every year to really recognize, you know, local talent uh, across the industry, uh, you know, be it from, you know, agency, media publisher, or even tech company. Uh, this is one of the annual event that, you know, everyone look forward to be, to be participating in. Uh, and of course, nothing is, uh, Nothing happens without the measurement. Uh, we emphasize this quite a bit, uh, you know, in this pillar uh, to make sure that the industry is uh, standardized uh, because, you know, we have like a million measurement ac across in the market. You know, a lot of people don't know which one to follow. So I think uh, this is quite important. And obviously the last one will be the communication pillar uh, that, you know, we work across the, across the industry again to uh, bring out topic, you know, because some of the topic that we talked about even today, uh, you know, stays in this, uh, you know, uh, webinar, but sometimes we basically, if the topic is really big, we bring it out into the into the media to get the industry or even public to know about that particular topic. All right, next slide. Uh, this is uh, some of the you know the the, the, the people who are uh, you know working on 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 the MBA. Uh, you know, we all this is our second job, by the way. Uh, it's not full time job. So a lot of us doing this, you know, uh, in, in hope to make a better industry for everyone to, you know, participate in. Next slide. Next slide. Uh, okay, so these are the council members, you know, cut across the industry. Uh, they are heavyweight in their own, uh, in the own uh, in their portfolio. Uh, and it's good to have a lot of uh, input, uh, credible input from, from everyone. Next slide. Uh, again, this is uh, just an update of how many events we do uh, across uh, the, the last, uh, you know, the last one year plus, uh, you know, it's been pandemic, uh, usually MDA, a lot of our events are physical, you know, pre-pandemic, uh, but of course now we do our best to make sure that 
you know, we still create events, but a lot of things are virtual. Uh, but we never know, you know, probably in 2022, we'll have some physical event, uh, you know, some sort of physical event. But we really thank you, like all of you today, 46 of you today, spending time with us because it takes a bit of time for us to compile the, you know, the events and making sure the topics are interesting. Uh, I hope everyone will, you know, learn as much as we, we, we do, uh, you know, from all the uh, activation that we do. Next slide. Uh, and finally, can I uh, So this is our this is our D awards. Uh, we've opened for you know submission early submission already. Uh, you know coming coming through in the next uh, few weeks. Uh, we're uh, you can you can go to the website. Uh, you can basically uh, you know look out for you know the category that you can submit uh, your work in. Uh, and also we do a lot of uh, we we try to recognize individual as well. There are, you know, some awards that are specific for individual in the industry. Uh, you know, these some of the these are the highlights that you can you can see there. You know, best integrated media campaign, use of social media, best use of uh, video. So these are the basically the three category that you know that's uh, more oversubscribed every time we do the award because I think there are a lot of good uh, campaign activation uh, in this particular category. Uh, and we, this year we have, we're you know of course recognizing you know the hard work that everyone has put during the pandemic, you know, work in, you know, in the business uh, uh, that basically run, uh, you know, with, with, with the challenges that we went through, uh, we want to be able to recognize, you know, uh, with this new award, how business beat COVID. This is one of the, you know, award that we're putting through for, for this year. Next slide. Uh, these are the sponsorship kit. If you want to be a sponsor, if you're a company who thinks you want to be a benefit, benefit uh, from this uh, award, there are sponsorship kit that we put together you you can you know you can you can see it here i'm not going to sell it through but you know you can if you want a more detail to be part and be sponsor part of the award uh, you can you can connect with with the mba uh, through our facebook and also our, our website next slide yeah so so that's pre pretty much uh, that got this this slide on uh, but I, before i end i would like to really thank everyone who made this possible uh, you know, Carson obviously leading the entire thing. You know, our 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 team. Uh, you know, technical team uh, that's putting together, and especially our friends from MDEC, uh, Hanina, that's going to present today. And we have uh, Alani later on, and also we have Albert later on talking about you know uh, the, the, the 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 artist measurement on out of form uh, for 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 digital, right? So really spend your time today. Uh, you know, with us. I think thank you again for. For, for being here and look out for you know more events that we put together. Thank you. All right, thank you, Nicholas. Right, thank you, Nicholas. Okay, uh, so <clears throat> so before we uh, let uh, Tun Haina come in to speak, so just a little bit of some ground rules. Uh, I, my name is Carlson. I'm actually the MC for today, and I'm also the timekeeper. Uh, think of it uh, today very much like uh, like a TED talk, but with some Q and A's at the, at the end. Right, so which means you can just sit back and relax and just listen. And uh, if you've got any questions, we will only be uh, entertaining uh, the questions through the comment boxes. Right, so uh, please put uh, all your questions that you have on the comment box, and then the team will curate and uh, kind of like uh, towards the end, we'll we'll, we'll so-called uh, speak out these questions, and then the. Uh, Hanina will be able to address these questions. Uh, all right. So the format uh, for today is uh, 30 minutes. So 20 minutes uh, will be uh, uh, Hanina's speaking, and then we're going to leave another 10 more minutes uh, for the Q&A. Right. So uh, as I've mentioned, I'm timekeeper. So along the way, uh, like maybe about five minutes before uh, uh, the session ends, I will kind of like on myself and say, hey, you know, five more minutes. So just don't be surprised you hear that from me. Lah. All right. Okay. So uh, with that, uh, I will just uh, kick off. Uh, well, before that, I would actually like to thank uh, MDEC, uh, who is actually our sponsor uh, for uh, this whole entire Digital Balance Day, uh, as well as also uh, from uh, Proficio, which is actually our eco ecosystem partner. As mentioned, uh, this time round, usually we will have Digital Balance just like a one-off thing, like, uh, like a three to four hours thing. Uh, but we realized that because everyone has Zoom fatigue, so we kind of take advantage of the during the lunch, this lunch time, and uh, just pack in as much as possible. That's why time is very important. So what we'll do uh, is actually we kind of broke it down to three days, right? So so today, uh, there's one session, uh, Digital Wednesday, and next Wednesday, there's another three more speakers, and then the following on the 
8th of December will be another three more speakers. So all in, you actually will be listening to uh, nine speakers all together, right? Packed within during the lunchtime. So without uh, much further ado, I'd like to introduce you to uh, Tun Hanina, our next presenter. She'll be actually talking about the, my digital workforce, which is uh, to work, how to work in tech, right? So a little bit about uh, Tun Hanina. She's actually the manager at uh, Malaysia's uh, economy, about MDEC. So Hanina is actually part of the digital workforce team. Uh, that actually she has actually launched various initiatives to rally action to reskill um, Malaysian workforce for the digital economy. So with that, over to you, Tun Hanina. Thank you, Kausen. Assalamualaikum and uh, uh, good afternoon, everybody. Thank you so much for uh, spending your lunch time with us. Uh, before that, allow me to share my screen. Sorry, I'm going to have to do this again. Yep, it's showing. All good. All right. All right, then. Uh, again, thank you so much for uh, to MDA, uh, the organizer, and to uh, the attendees uh, for sharing your uh, Wednesday afternoon with us. Now, I'd like to share with you about one of MDAC's uh, uh, initiative called uh, My Digital Workforce in Tech. But before I dive in about the initiative, I would like to give you an overview of the digital talent landscape uh, in Malaysia. Right? The statistics that's presented uh, are based on uh, research, our research through uh, LinkedIn Talent Insights, or MDEX research across uh, five job portals, and also a COVID impact survey covering various topics uh, such as recruitment, retention, uh, university engagement, and impact of COVID. Now, 99 respondents, uh, uh, we received 99 respondents, and 86% uh, of the respondents are from the tech sector. So when we compare the result of the 2020 survey with the 2021 survey, we saw a big jump in adoption of digital technologies by companies. Now, this is expected because COVID has forced companies to uh, accelerate their digital adoption uh, in order to uh, survive and thrive in this condition. And we also saw a shift in focus to retraining employees in data and digital tech skills in 2021. And company had indicated through the survey that they are needing assistance to source for digital talents. Now, looking at the job landscape in quarter two of this year, we saw an increase in um, digital job vacancies more than, than uh, three times over the past year. And 70% of these jobs are for experienced talents. Um, and we saw that the highest growth are in e-commerce, as expected, cybersecurity and networking, and creative content uh, and design. Now, when we, uh, through uh, uh, LinkedIn, we learned that there are more than 250,000 digital talents in Malaysia. Now, mind you that we define digital talent as uh, those who are currently employed and having an active LinkedIn profile, right? So when we look at the hiring demand, uh, the hiring demand for digital talents remains low in Sabah, Trunganu, Kelantan, and, and Labuan. And it's primarily concentrated in the central region. We also learned that machine learning and AWS skills are highly sought after in Asia, but not as high in, in Malaysia. The, the fastest growing skills in Malaysia are data analytics, software development, and, and digital content development. So we looked at the fastest growing job titles, data scientists and data engineer are uh, the two fastest growing job titles in Malaysia. Interestingly, you know, self-employment or gig work continues to, to uh, be as popular jobs amongst the, the digital talents in the region. 
Now, now that I have given a, a quick overview of the digital talent uh, landscape, I'll share with you about the initiative that I've mentioned earlier, which is uh, My Digital Workforce uh, in Tech, or My Wit in short. Now, this initiative is crafted to incentivize employers to hire unemployed Malaysians via digital upskilling and reskilling. So you listen that, hey, your company say, hey, we need uh, assistance in sourcing for talent. So we said, okay, we're trying to incentivize company to hire unemployed Malaysians via digital upskilling and reskilling. Now, the goal is also to meet the strong demand for digital business services and higher value uh, digital tech jobs. Now, this initiative was launched back in April of this year. Now, if anyone in the audience uh, uh, is already aware of my wit, uh, but I do want to share that uh, my wit had undergone uh, some enhancements recently, which uh, is what I'll be sharing uh, with you today. Right, so as an overview, MyWit offers uh, training and salary incentives to companies that are hiring uh, fresh graduates or unemployed Malaysians in either digital tech or digital business services role in any industry. So regardless what the company's, uh, 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 you know, what industry the company is in, if they are hiring digital tech or digital business services role, then they can apply for the incentive program. Right. Uh, please note that the initiative is paid to the company on a reimbursement basis. Now, the incentives offered are a training incentive where companies have the option to either send the employee to an in-house training where the eligible amount is up to uh, 5,000 ringgit uh, per pack or external training of up to 8,000 ringgit per uh, pack. The salary incentive offered is 40% of the employee monthly salary for a period of six months. Now there is a minimum salary requirement of 2,000 ringgit and the incentive is capped at 2,600 ringgit uh, per month per person. Now, as far as um, allowable training, if company opt for in-house training, then the employee must complete a minimum of 40 hours of training and the training provider can be either from the uh, organization, from the company itself, or from other entity within the same group of company. So for example, if you decide to send your new employee to uh, an in-house training, you can have you know, um, the manager or supervisor provide the training. Or if you have a, a sister company that provides training, then you can engage with your sister company to provide the training for your staff. And that's, can, that is considered as in-house training. For external training, company can choose from courses that's listed on MDEX uh, digital skills training directory uh, from three different types of courses, which are work and learn. Uh, it's called, the other one is uh, called career upgrade. And uh, finally, um, the other one is called learning on demand courses. Now, if company opt for learning on demand courses, then the employee must complete a minimum of 20 hours of learning in order to uh, be able to claim. Right. Just a, um, an overview of the digital skills training directory. So MyWit basically leverages on MDEX uh, digital skills training directory. So the directory is basically a catalog of courses and online training providers that have been reviewed and endorsed by a panel of uh, industry practitioners uh, to guide Malaysians in selecting courses that meet their career needs uh, for digital economy jobs, right? So as I've mentioned, we, uh, for, for MyWit, if company opt for external training, then they can choose from either work and learn courses. This is uh, basically courses that cover from basic to advanced level. We currently have more than 250 courses listed from you know, uh, more than 70 uh, training providers that covers uh, focus areas such as data, cybersecurity, software development, uh, games, uh, GBS, and, and, and fintech actually is already added as well. So the net 
next type of courses is called career upgrade courses. This is a, a heavily project-based uh, 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 courses. And one of the requirements uh, for training provider to actually be listed is that they have to have 90% uh, placement track record or at least five confirmed hiring partner. So currently the focus area for uh, career upgrade courses is data, cybersecurity and software development with more than 30 uh, courses that's available. Finally, we have learning on demand courses. So these are basically the massive open online course providers or platforms. We currently have nine different platforms uh, on, on the directory, the likes of LinkedIn Learning, Open Learning, Lideronomics, and et cetera. Right? So here's just basically a, a, a uh, an overview of roles and responsibility on our part, MDAC, uh, our, we are responsible to provide the salary incentive of 40% of the monthly salary for six months. And the incentive is capped at 2,600. And also the training incentive of up to 5,000 ringgit per person for in-house training and uh, or 8,000 ringgit uh, per person for third-party training. For partners, Right, so uh, the uh, partners' responsibility would include to hire uh, unemployed Malaysians in any digital tech or digital business services roles, to provide training to the employees uh, hired under uh, this program, and to bear the remaining cost of the salary and also the training cost that's not covered. Uh, by the MyWeight incentive. It is also company's responsibility to offer the minimum uh, uh, salary requirement to meet the minimum salary requirement, which is uh, the 2000 ringgit. So there's some eligibility criteria for, for companies, for, for hiring partners, as well as for employees. Uh, the first one for uh, companies is that company, if it's a contract position, then company must offer a, a minimum term of employment for 12 months. The company must be incorporated uh, in Malaysia under the uh, company X that's listed. Uh, there is a minimum paid up capital of 20,000 and the company must not be subject to liquidation or dormant. And this is not for a public sector uh, employer. And also there needs to be a declaration, uh, uh, you know, company will have to declare and disclose if there's a close relationship between company shareholder, director, top management with MDEX uh, director uh, or employee. On the other side, is, uh, for employee side, is the, the eligibility criteria include, it goes, the first one goes back to the objective. And so they must be a Malaysian citizen. Uh, second one is the employee must not have a permanent employment for a minimum of two months or they uh, must either be a fresh graduate or retrenched employees. Uh, they must not be a close family member uh, to the you know, director, shareholder, top management of the hiring company. And the commencement date for the employee, the commencement date stated in the letter of employment is any date from uh, 5th April of this year to 30th of April, uh, 2022. And the employee must not be a uh, current or past a recipient uh, of my wit at any company. And uh, he or she must also not be a part of Penjana Kerjaya and Penjana KPT CAP program. Just some specific conditions that I'll go over uh, pretty quickly is that, you know, company can submit multiple application provided that they have actually uh, uh, received and countersigned the uh, partnership agreement from the initial or previous application. Uh, the reimbursement of the incentive will be on a monthly day basis, meaning that company can claim on a monthly basis. And the hiring partners are given two months from the program completion date. Uh, to submit their final claim. And the completion date is six months from the latest employment date. Now, what does that mean? That means if you submit an application for employee ABC that starts uh, maybe in April, May, June, then your completion date would be six months from uh, June. The program completion uh, date would be six months from June. 
And then uh, the hiring partners are not allowed to replace a participant, meaning no backfill. If you want to, uh, you know, if you're bringing in somebody new to backfill the role that's been left vacant, you have to reapply for, for that new employee for the MyWeb program. Uh, and hiring partners are required to notify MDEC with uh, documentary evidence if there is a, a termination or resignation by the participating, uh, uh, by the employee. And finally, we say that hiring partners are required to provide us with an employee status report uh, at the end of the 12 month period. Right. So we need to do a verification that, that you know, in fact, you know, the, the employment term is at least for uh, 12 months. And we would require, for example, latest EPF statement uh, and evidence to verify that, you know, there is a salary that's being paid to the employee. So this is just an overview of processes involved, basically application and reimbursement. So the first step is for companies or uh, to go ahead and, and hire and uh, um, select the, uh, the training that you would like to send your new hires to. And you can submit your application online. Uh, once we receive the application, we'll perform the evaluation process. Once all the you know, I's uh, are dotted, T's across, then you'll receive a partnership agreement where you will you know, sign, uh, come to sign and, and send it back to us. And then we move on into the reimbursement stage where company will have to register on the e uh, on our e-invoice system because all the uh, claims are uh, going to be submitted electronically. Now, mind you that when we send you the uh, partnership agreement, you'll receive an onboarding pack with manuals on how to register and navigate through our e-invoice system. Uh, this is, I think, my... Next to last slide, just a quick um, uh, checklist uh, prior to applying for MyWIT. So from company point of view, we would require company to supply us with the latest and complete SSM certificate. We do need to have the job description for the job roles that's being applied for. Uh, and we also would require company to submit employee details that would include uh, the copy of the employment letter that states the minimum term of employment, a copy of my card, and then there is going to be employees details where we provide the template on our online uh, application form where company would have to download, fill all the necessary fills, and then upload it back to us before submitting the online application. And then if the employee is a fresh graduate, then company will need to submit either the final academic transcript or certificate or official letter of completion from the university or the institution. And if the employee is a retrenched uh, worker, then we would require for company to uh, submit a, a retrenchment letter. Uh, for the training part, if it's external training, we request that companies submit the quotation for the selected courses that's provided by the training provider. And then if it's in-house training, again, there's a template uh, as part of the employee details template where company will need to provide us with details of the in-house training. For example, what's the module being covered? Uh, Who is the trainer? What's the cost? Uh, those are some of the informations that we would require for company to, to input uh, in the Excel uh, template. And then finally, a written declaration that all the documents that uh, uh, and information that submitted is, is correct and true, and it has to be signed by uh, an authorized signatory. And finally, to, uh, just a quick uh, for disbursement uh, purposes, these are documentations that's required. It will include the first one's evidence of uh, that the participating employee completed the training. If it's external training, then we say it's attendance slip or completion certificate, uh, an invoice or proof of payment for the training cost. If it's in-house training, we say training attendance slip and uh, a document to evidence the, the training cost. So this can be, you know, this is again part of the template that we provided, but it has to be signed by an authorized signatory. Uh, 
And then payslip and EPF or EPF statement of the participating employee. And again, finally, a written declaration uh, to indicate that information documents that submitted are, are true and correct, and it has to be signed by a, an authorized signatory. So this is my last slide. But as a summary, I'll just share with you a short uh, video before we go into our Q&A session. Thank you. All right, with that, thank you so much. Thank you, thank you, Tunhanina. Uh, thanks for taking us through uh, the MyWeight program so, co so comprehensively, as well as also the requirements, uh, appreciate it. And I really like the, what uh, you guys are doing with, uh, in order to reskill the Malaysians, uh, to be ready for the digital Malaysia, right? So um, is there any questions, uh, uh, Jess and Megan? If there isn't, then I actually do have a question. Sure. Yep. Currently, there are no questions from the chat. Maybe you want to ask first to get the ball sure. rolling. Yep. Thank, Thank you. you. No problems. So, uh, the question to you would be actually how uh, is the reception for this program so far? And what are the typical roadblocks uh, of uh, the, the stakeholders uh, to embrace this program? Okay. So, uh, the reception has been uh, actually... Um, very good. As I've mentioned earlier, uh, we launched a program back in April and we have since done some enhancements. Previously, the, the, the way the application is slightly different. It's a two-stage uh, application where we say company, if you are hiring, let us know, you know what are the roles that you are hiring right? before it's being filled. And then we give company uh, some time, two months period to try and fill uh, uh, those vacant roles, right? Um, but the feedback that we got from companies is that, hey, you know what? It's a little bit too short. The two months window is a little bit too short. And also this two stage application is a little bit too cumbersome. So what we have done is we've listened to companies and say, how do we simplify and make it easier for companies to actually, um, you know, uh, accelerate the hiring? and also uh, helping companies as far as incentivize them uh, through you know, the salary and, and training incentives. So that's why we have done away with the two-stage application. And now what we've done is company, we say, hey, you go ahead and you, you know, find, and find talents and fill your vacant positions and then come to us once you're ready. And then you know, we'll, we'll, we'll you know, take your application and process it then. So it's a much uh, simpler application to the companies. So we have gotten, you know, when, when we first um, uh, launched this program, we have gotten about uh, 6,000 vacancies yeah, from, from companies. So what we're trying to do now is help to fill those uh, 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 6,000 uh, vacancies by by promoting it to our database. We recently actually had uh, my digital workforce week where we had a, a, a career expo and we also advertised those, those vacancies. So the roadblocks would be you know previously was the uh, lengthy and perhaps cumbersome application process to companies and we hope that you know we have uh, simplified and make it easier for companies now. Thank you. Thanks for the answer. Thank you. Appreciate it. 
Uh, is there any more questions from the floor? Um, Daphne here, yeah. So I have a questions over here. Um, would like to actually check, right, because I know that this program is opening for those um, um, freshy, fresh graduates and unemployed um, um, job seekers. So how about the interns uh, in the same company that, you know, we want to absorb them as a permanent staff? Is it we entitled for this program? So, yes. Yeah, so if they have been interning with you for some time and then you are now uh, going to be offering them a, uh, is a full-time or contract position, right? So then what we will look at is the offer letter that you issue to them upon uh, converting them into your full-time staff. So they will be considered as a fresh graduate. Lah. All right. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. We have another uh seven minutes actually more to uh to the end of the session any more questions uh there are some questions in the chat uh i think okay. we go with uh jlo first it says can i check for a returning malaysian without epf or employment record in malaysia would i still qualify so uh so thanks so much jlo for the question so what we looked at we will ask uh uh the um participating employee that how long have you been unemployed that is particulars that you have to uh, input for example the last date the last company or if you are employed but you have no permanent employment for the past two months say for example when you come back to malaysia maybe three months ago or four months ago but you don't have any permanent employment so that would consider as no permanent employment we categorize that unemployed for a minimum of two months so you will qualify jlo all right besides that uh Besides that, we also have uh, Yi Ying He would like to email more, uh, email later to understand more details. Could you maybe uh, let us know where to, uh, where to email to? Yeah, sure. I am sharing my email. Okay. Right. Great. Yep. So the email uh, is dropped in the comment box. Yeah. Uh, to Yi Ying He, I hope that answers your question. And also just another one from Othman who's basically asking, so indirectly, meaning if you have no SSM, you will be unqualified for this MDEC national digitalization training, correct? Uh, so there is, there's, you know, one clarification. So this is for my wit uh, incentive. Yeah? So I'm not sure whether, you know, that's what you meant by national di digitalization training. But if it is from my week, yes, one of the eligibility uh, criteria for uh, companies would be it has to be incorporated in Malaysia and we do require for companies to submit their latest and complete SSM certificate. Thank you. Are there any more questions? Uh, Apparently Jess? no more questions in the chat. That's all uh, okay. for now. But also, I just want to, uh, uh, you know, uh, Carlson, one thing that I just want to highlight for now, right? If, for example, in the audience, uh, if they are job seekers, right? We do mm. right now have on our MyWit page just a section for job seekers where we uh, would actually list down uh, the companies that have vacancies. Right, so it will be various vacancies, digital tech or digital business services. But towards the end of this month, I think we'll we are going to uh, take down that section uh, because again, as I mentioned, we have to shift our model for to you know where we say companies, you you go ahead and find your talent first rather than you mm. give us your vacancies. But there is still time if there are job job seekers among our audience that you know I can recommend to go onto the MyWeb page and explore what uh, opportunities that's available. Okay, so uh, it's actually already on the chat box, that page, uh, mdec.my uh, slash mywith search jobs. So it's yeah. there. For those who are in the audience, you can actually click on it. All right. Okay. Uh, um, do if we there's... have a little bit more time? I think some new comments just came in with some questions. Sure, we got uh, for just okay. one more, if you don't mind. One more. Okay. Yes. Uh, actually, there's two, but I'm not sure how to Let's pick try. this. <laughs> Let's try. Yeah. Um... Okay, maybe we go with uh, 
Yi Ying He la. Yeah. Uh, said actually would like to know for uh startup companies are they encouraged to apply for this as well? Uh, of course, you know, this uh, initiative is not just, uh, you know, for MSC or MNC, you know, it's actually for all companies out there. But again, there is a minimum requirement. Uh, if you recall, there is a, uh, a minimum paid up capital requirement of 20,000 ringgit. So if you look at the company's eligibility criteria and your, if your company meet those requirements, you can certainly uh, uh, apply for this incentive program. Great. Uh, the last question, uh, Jess. Okay, cool. We have time. <laughs> so there's another question from a Muhammad Faisal. He says, if the company is uh, does have an SSM but does not have EPF and KWSP, can it participate? Uh, what we do, okay, so if you recall the uh, required documentation, right? So when we look at company, we just say, okay, provide us with your SSM certificate. And then when you so, uh, provide us with your employees uh, details, right? So when we look at EPF, if, if there is, uh, for example, is when you want to file for your claim. So for example, Halina is hired by Kausen at some company and later on Kausen wants to submit uh, a claim for Hanina's salary and I am actually a full-time employee of Kausen. So what Kausen would need to submit to me is uh, my uh, EPF statement to indicate that, hey, you know what, there is actually an EPF contribution. But we do understand that because that's why we say e uh, uh, payslip and or EPF statement. For some organizations, if the employee is a contract employee, they probably do not, you know, not do like EPF contribution. Then we say, you know, that the that then you don't supply to us lah, because you say it's a contract position and there's no EPF contribution. Yeah. So that is on the employee side. Thank you. Wow. We are on the dot. Thank you very much for the succinct and very clear explanation uh, on all the questions, uh, Tunhanina. Thank you so much. Uh, right. So we are done. So for uh, Tun Hanina's session, so if you could encourage her, go to the reaction button and uh, click your reaction, like what I did, like ha, huh, give her a thumbs up. So if you could do that, then it would definitely encourage our speakers, right? Uh, you can do that and just go to the bottom to the yes at the bottom of the uh, uh, the the your screen. There's a reaction button. Click on it and then uh, you can react from there. So with that, uh, thank you very much again, Tun Hanina, for your time. I uh, really thank appreciate you. it. And I would like to actually introduce your colleague next. Thank you, Tuhanina. Okay, uh, great timing. Let me introduce you to our uh, next speaker. Uh, her title of the presentation is MDEX Helping Hand on Digital Marketing. So uh, of course, for those uh, MDA members here, this will definitely be beneficial to you. A little bit about our presenter, uh, Alan, uh, Alani Swafina. She's a MassCom graduate. Uh, and she actually has a small business owner, a small business owner as well, who is now pursuing a career in marketing. So Alani is now under the brand and strat partnership team at MDEC under the new skills pillar, which helps develop digitally skilled workforce and communities. So with that, I would like to uh, get uh, Alani uh, on board to speak to us. And just like, uh, like uh, the first speaker, if you've got any questions and so on, please drop it in the comment box. Uh, if you're listening in from Facebook, please drop it there as well. And then uh, towards the end, we'll take the uh, the answer. So Alani has 20, 20 minutes to speak and then we'll remain the last 10 minutes for her to answer your questions. With that, over to you, Alani. Okay, hi. Thank you, Carlson, for the introduction. So, um, okay, so... For yep. my for the next section, um, my session is going to be a little bit laid back. Um, I'm going to share on how MDEC um how MDEC uh be uh, as a helping hand on digital marketing. So um okay, I'm going to start um with a quote. So there's a quote saying that. Don't find customers for your product, but find products for your customers. So it's a quote from Seth Godin. 
So an, an American author for the book called This Is Marketing. So I personally agree with him because that is how I think um, when I want to start my business or even when I want to add a new product to my business. But then um, how do I start my business from scratch? Um, how do I gain followers um, and gain trust with having a zero followers on social media? So my name is Arani Sofina. Um, I'm a marketing executive at MDEC and also a small business owner. So for this uh, sharing session, uh, I'm going to share on how digital marketing and how MDEC uh, initiative has helped me. And I hope to help uh, digital marketers or other people out there to sharpen up their skills, up skills and reskill them themselves uh, on digital marketing. So uh, I'm going to share a little bit on my the, the journey of my small business. So which I started to be active and pay attention to my business right when uh, pandemic hit. And of course, uh, when you when starting a business during that time, how else uh, we all can do it if it's not going to be digital, right? If it's not going online. So while many shops and businesses are closing down during the pandemic, uh, but who would have thought that there is also a business that is booming due to the virus and the restriction of our daily life that we went through. But it was a great starting point for me as well. Uh, and this might sound cliche, but it is about having the right product to the right market at the right time. So take an example of businesses that are selling face masks. It's a booming industry now, right? But I don't sell face masks. Lah. Okay. Um, I was selling mirrors, um, decorative vintage looking mirrors. But uh, when our first MCO, um, it started with panic buying of toilet papers and drinking Dalgona coffee every day. So people had nothing else to do. I had nothing else to do. Um, we were sitting at home on a couch, on a bed all day, um, watching Netflix. Um, we are bored out of our minds. And then that's where I realized that People now, uh, people are started to look around their house and see what else they can add to their space. For example, to decorate or redecorate their homes. Um, and they started to share them on social media. So that is the right time for me to go all out marketing my products on social media. And I thought that I want to sell um, things that could add a little dose of joy to people to get their mind out of the painful time, uh, painful period of lockdown. So I want it to be like when people purchase it for me, when the package arrives, they get all excited to decorate um, their space. But uh, even when I think that I have the right products um, at the right time, but I didn't really know how to do marketing, how to market them. So from having um, less than 100 followers at the time, um, I started to have influencers to upload, to do content, to upload the content on their platform and spreading awareness at the same time. Lah. So when I think that I need to reach uh, for a broader um, target audiences, I see this, uh, this boost post button on my Instagram. So um, I didn't really know how to set up my ads, but all I did was boosting, boosting the post, boosting the organic post. So as long as I see my ads running, I'm good. I didn't really know how to really set up ads, having a proper Facebook ad manager or how to see the reports and stuff like that. So, but surprisingly, um, these boost post button does help me to push out my sale. Um, I managed to sell about nearly 400 units of mirrors um, during that time, during the first period of MCO. And I think it's a huge um, achievement for me, which I was only doing it um, part-time because I was uh, also doing my final year uh, for my degree at the time. So, and then um, other than having influences and also boosting my posts, I think that 
I started to think that I got to look into the current social media trends to in order to step up my games. So um, let's look into the social media marketing trends this year in 2021 to get some insights. Okay, so these are the three marketing trends that I'm going to highlight. So first is on social media marketing, uh, first social media marketing trends that we all should um, know is the stories as content format, um, the growing of social commerce as well as people first social media. So what is all, what is this is all about? So actually uh, stories as content format, actually they are, more than 500 million users that interact with, um, with Instagram stories every day. So posting more stories within a day actually influence the reach and impression metrics and you get more people to engage with, with your stories. So you need to uh, be consistent in posting stories every day. If you wanna have a high reach impression, not just for your stories, also uh, for your accounts. And based on statistic from Social Insider, they found out that um, stories, the, uh, the format of image stories actually have a higher rate, uh, higher forward rate. So when you tap on a story, you see the image. So the rate for people to uh, forward, tap forward, um, go forward with the stories instead, instead of exiting the story. Um, so the rate is about 5.65% higher than the video um, stories format across all profile, uh, profile sizes. So as you can see here, um, it shows that higher rate of tap forward rate for image is higher compared to video tap forward rate. So this is for the profile with less than 10K followers. So in my case, um, my business account does uh, have um, less than 10k followers at the time. Um, next on is the social commerce growth. So we all know that shopping online um, is a trend now. It's growing and it will continue to do so. So we see that social media industry are constantly adapting to increase their user experience with a lot of new features um, and tools to help support an easy shopping experience. So for example, on Facebook, it allows um, business owner to set up a shop that people can browse through a product catalog and also purchase them straight on the platform itself without having to jump into another platform or um, website. So, this uh, is an amazing tool for business owners as well as marketers to capitalize on because 54% uh, of internet users search for products on social media. So this means that social media can influence the purchase decision of its user. And the third trend that we are seeing from big brands now is that putting people first on social media when doing digital marketing. So your, your organic social media posts um, will rise to the top of your audience newsfeed if you engage in a two-way communication. So we know that algorithm, um, it's designed to serve out relevant materials and targeted advertising to users, but um, engage online communities uh, can aid you by magnifying the reach of your content through a medium that the audiences uh, already have confidence in, let's say, for example, um, through, uh, through likes, shares, and also comments. So um, retargeting and also uh, lookalike paid audience um, is actually um, crit more critical than ever. So, but for paid ads, um, the future is uncertain. However, the future for customer engagement and organic reach is certain for marketers who have a great content and a great ideas. So now let's look into a great example of putting people first in your digital marketing to build conversation around your brand. I'm going to show you a video.
on Super Bowl Sunday, the U.S. is big, loud, and expensive. Sweden is Swedish. So how does Volvo compete with the other car brands and their millions spent on commercials during the game? We don't. We steal it. When you see a car commercial during the game, any car commercial, not Volvo, you can tweet using the hashtag Volvo contest. The interception was simple. Their commercials would give you a chance to win one of our cars for someone you love. Just tweet their name to Volvo during any car commercial. When Mercedes wanted you to look here, people immediately went here. When Lexus spent 4.5 million for this, Twitter looked like this. Shifting the social conversation to Volvo. With up to 2,000 tweets per minute every time their commercials aired, we changed the Super Bowl conversation from one loud 30-second roar to an ongoing conversation about Volvo that lasted the entire game. We were the only car company to trend both nationally and globally. So they weren't advertising on TV, they were letting all the other car companies do that for them. And just like that, their millions of dollars worth of car commercials turned into a social conversation about Volvo, helping our XC60 to a 70% sales increase the month following the game, the highest in its segment. Right. So after, so basically after seeing the video, that is how Volvo did it. Um, they actually let people to talk about their brands and make it trending without having to repeat ads. So they are um, putting people into their campaign. And now back onto my story. Um, as Council mentioned, I was a MassCom student majoring in interpersonal communication, a two-way communication. But for my intern, I worked um, at the media agency with no advertising background. So I think that is where I acquainted with advertising and also digital marketing. So as I learn and also observe how to properly set up a campaign uh, on Facebook ads particularly, I tried to experiment it on my business, trying and try and error for the ads, um, paying kind of expensive paper clicks. And even now I'm still learning. I still have a lot to learn. I'm still not an expert. Um, but when my intern was about to end, I found out about digital marketing certifications. So which I think was a great opportunity for me to have in order to secure my first job after graduating because uh, my major was interpersonal communication, so it has nothing to do with digital marketing. So, but for uh, when I search it online uh, for Facebook Blueprint certification itself, um, if I'm not mistaken, it costs around 50 USD, so which equal to almost 200 ringgit. So for a fresh grad, um, it is kind of expensive, so I didn't take it. I didn't take uh, the, the certification. So now um, the good news is MDAC is actually giving that courses and certification for free. Okay, so moving on, um, MDAC now is bringing back Let's Learn Digital. Uh, we are partnering with Facebook, Google, and also LinkedIn that offers the free digital marketing certifications. So this is actually the second edition of Let's Learn Digital program, uh, which we aim to upskill Malaysians to prepare them uh, to work in a, an economy that is increasingly dependent on the, uh, technology, um, both even during MCO or even after MCO. So we are encouraging um, a lifelong learning via these e-learning resources in order to equip 
the current and also future digital talents in Malaysia to future proof their skills and also career in line with the ever growing um, industry. So this program is open for all Malaysian from now until 31st December 2021 this year. So why is this certification or um, is important uh, for digital marketers? Because uh, according to Job Street, um, for the fourth quarter of 2020, Recruit, uh, recruiting in the marketing and also advertising industry in Malaysia has actually um, recovered from the pandemic. So with a 84% increase in marketing and also 200% uh, increase in digital marketing compared to the first quarter of 2020. So um, also according to Head of Asia of LinkedIn, in Malaysia, the marketing executive position is one of the top three trending careers, while uh, marketing strategy is the top trending skills. And for the list of top 10 jobs with the highest number of job op opportunities, job openings, um, digital marketers is one of them. So these courses um, that Let's Learn Digital are offering is definitely going to help you to upskill your marketing skills, to add your employability, uh, and also to stay employed as well. So it's not only just for um, beginners, and also, it also for those who are currently employed, just for you to add your skills on digital marketing. So out of these three partnerships that we have, uh, we have Facebook certifications. So Facebook course, for Facebook courses, um, it will teach you the basic of advertising on Facebook, um, Instagram, also Facebook Messenger. So this is most, uh, most uh, suitable for beginners who would like to learn on the basic of setting up an ad on Facebook, Instagram, um, how to extract reports and do the testing for your campaign before setting it up. So you can get through these courses at your own pace, but this Facebook Digital Marketing Association um, certification, basically it would take um, up to six to eight hours for you to complete and get certified. And moving on for Google Ads. So Google courses, um, they will test your knowledge on the various Google Ads products that falls under Google Ads certification. So we have um, Google Ads Display, Ads Search, Google Ads Measurement, Videos, Google Shopping Ads, as well as Google Ad Ads. And lastly, for LinkedIn. So for LinkedIn, Let's Learn Digital, uh, we offer digital marketing learning path that will provide you with uh, several uh, courses which not only um, focuses on marketing on, in link, on LinkedIn, but also it covers uh, surrounding digital marketing. So when you become certified, you can actually show off your knowledge of LinkedIn marketing tools and set yourself apart from the competition for, from the other um, talent. So after passing a certification exam, you, you will earn a badge or a certification that you may display on your LinkedIn page as a proof that you are an established expert. So um, looking into the LinkedIn search, we have, um, we covers basically on marketing search, um, marketing strategies, how to become a digital marketing specialist as well as to master in demand professional soft skills. So one of our participants shared um, his experience. So he said that, um, I believe when I uploaded cert on my LinkedIn profile, it shows that I'm always eager to learn. So that is to add your employability, rate, uh, employability um, which I managed to obtain a temporary job uh, for six months at Microsoft. So it's a huge company for him. Congratulations. Uh, yeah. So when uh, you can also 
actually win prizes when you get certified. So all you have to do is upload your certification badges on LinkedIn, Facebook, or any social media, and use the hashtag uh, MDACLLD to get a chance to win these prizes, um, during it grab food vouchers, and also Facebook swags. And that brings me to, my, to the end of my session. Uh, I'm just going to open up the floor for any Q&A regarding um, Let's Learn Digital program. Uh, or you can also straight away uh, scan the QR code here to go to our website and learn more about this. Okay, uh, before you turn on the slide, maybe you can just see this slide on. Uh, yeah, because of yeah, the QR. For those who, yeah, for those to, to scan this, right? Uh, okay, uh, thank you. Uh, thank you, Alani, for actually taking us through your own entrepreneurial journey as well as also tips to success uh, and also how Let's Learn Digital have actually uh, benefited you. Uh, so let's uh, open the, uh, the uh, jazz. If there's any questions, uh, please uh, speak up. Thank you. Hi. Um, so we have a question, a couple of questions in the chat section. So first is from Faisal. He asks, uh, can we also get digital certification like you said for now? Sorry, can you repeat the question? Oh, sure. So Faisal asks, um, can we also get digital certification like you said? Uh, yeah, you can actually go to our website. You can scan the QR code. Um, so from there, you get to choose which certification that you want, uh, Facebook, LinkedIn, or Google. Then you all you have to do is register, and it will get you through all the courses that you need to go through. And after you completed the courses, um, it's going to be an exam. So for Facebook, let's say, um, you get to redeem a code to get a free exam and once you pass the exam you get the certification thank okay. you any more Thanks. questions uh yes so fazliana asks uh can fresh graduates apply for the certification yeah definitely so this program is open to all malaysians uh those who are fresh graduates or um, who are currently employed. So for fresh grads, let's say you are from, like me, uh, you are from uh, a different major from marketing or digital marketing, you can take up these courses just to add for your knowledge. And also I think it's best for you to add this cert on your resume just to add, uh, just to let the um, employee, employees know that you have this search, you have this knowledge, um, despite of having another background field. Yeah. Okay, thanks for uh, answering that. Hope that answers your question, Fadiana. Uh, so Ruiz asked previously how to apply the course. So Alani has answered that where you can just scan the code and, and um, find out more. Yeah. Um, Faisal has one more question, which I'm not too sure what he's referring to, is that, is this program same as GLOW? Uh, okay. So um, GLOW is actually also uh, an MDAC initiative. So I think for more information, you can go to our website, uh, mdac.com.my for more info. So. Um, at our website page, it includes all of our initiatives, um, LLD, GLOW, and so from there you can tell the difference and also apply for those you would want to participate in. All right, awesome. So I'll just drop the link to MDEX website so you guys can check it out if you'd like to know more, Faisal. All right, so um, Ofman asks uh, particularly about your uh, business is that mm -hmm. wondering how do you manage to get 400 engagement for vintage mirrors in one year? Are you using Avana social commerce platform? Oh, okay. Uh, it's actually uh, not 400 engagement. It's just I managed to sell 400 uh, mirrors during the first pandemic. Uh, First pandemic started March, I think, to August or October. So 
all I did was having my Instagram page up and boosting my uh, organic posts. And also I'm active on stories, Instagram stories. So every time, let's say I have a new restock or a new release of product, I would first upload an organic post on that and also post it on my stories. So that increases my engagement and also engagement with my audiences. So they get to reply to my stories and I get to explain on them on any question that they have, yeah. Awesome, Thank hope you. that answers your question of mine. Sorry, person, to cut you. <laughs> no, no problem, thanks. Any other questions? Oh, wait. Uh, we don't yeah. have any other questions on in the chat section as of now. Okay, no problems. Hey, just uh, curious, uh, Alani, maybe you could uh, drop in the your the IG handle of your business uh, on the chat box. So maybe everybody can go check it out as well. Yeah, I can do that. Thank you, Carlson. <laughs> Free marketing. Yeah. <laughs> okay, I just dropped a okay. username on Instagram. And how do you pronounce it? Uh, it's Safine. Safine, okay. Yeah, it's actually um revolves around my name Sorfina Safine. Yeah. Right. <laughs> That's clever. Okay. Uh I think uh I should stop sharing my screen. Sure. Mm -mm. Is there any more questions from the floor? No questions as of now, too. Okay. So with that, I think uh, we will then uh, probably uh, move on to the next speaker. So thanks again, Alani, for really sharing your personal journey as well, how AMDEC ties all these things together. So for those who are actually interested, uh, please uh, go on the, the AMDEC website and just look for uh, Let's Learn Digital and then go through the certification and just follow kind of like one, one step after another and then the, you will be uh, certified. Uh, what Alani said is correct, you know, uh, whatever is offered outside of uh, AMDEC, um, yeah, I've, I've explored myself, uh, my, my staff I well explored, it's actually very expensive. So to, to have this kind of accessibility is great, right? So thanks, Alani. So uh, for those uh, who would like to uh, give Alani a clap or a reaction, uh, please go to the reaction button. And then just like me, just give a thumbs up. Thank you very much to encourage her. Great, thank you. Okay. And we are down to the last speaker for the day. And uh, during this lunchtime, again, thank you all of you for uh, joining. I really appreciate your time. Uh, and it's amazing that, uh, that uh, we hardly have anybody drop out from the last uh, one hour. So really thank you so much. And, uh, and we have the next speaker here, uh, Albert. So let me quickly uh, introduce very quickly uh, Albert uh, to, to, to all of you. Right, so Albert is actually the CEO of Black Tech. A developing, uh, he's actually developing a next generation solutions that transforms human computer interaction for customized advertising, security, and customer monitoring, right? So he has a solid experience in the financial industry. Uh, he has developed uh, bank solutions, uh, building AI-based uh, startups, and so much more, right? So on top of that, he also serves as the advisory board member for Taylor's University uh, and uh, University Technical Malaysia. So uh, with that, I'd like to quickly introduce uh, Albert. Uh, so like, uh, like, like all, uh, for those who are just joining us, uh, just to uh, very quickly just put in some ground rules. Uh, if you've got any questions for Albert, please drop it in the comment boxes, whether you're tuning in from Facebook or on Zoom, please put in uh, your, your questions and then we will uh, address it. So uh, Albert has uh, 20 minutes uh, to present. So lay back and uh, just enjoy the presentation. And then the last uh, 10 minutes, uh, we will be addressing some of uh, the questions that you will have for Albert. With that, Albert, take it away. Oh, Albert, you're on mute, Albert. I'll put it back. All right. Okay. All right. So let me share the screen, okay? Oh, yeah, okay. So I hope you all are getting it. Yes, uh, you just need to turn it to uh, presentation mode. Oh, yeah, yeah, thank you. Great. Uh, so I think this, I hope I share, share some, some new tech with you and just to tell you what's out there is something that you can use and something you can learn from his experience that I want to share with you. So what I'm going to share with you is basically how you measure audience demographics and capture their emotions in real time. 
This is something which we found, you know, which we developed this solution we, in five years ago, and we felt it's really cool. And a lot of application that we have built around it that you can use at the same time also understand how you can use it for in digital marketing. And, and basically this particular uh, talk that I'm talking about is very skewed towards digital out of home marketing. So uh, basically what we do is audience measurement. So what is audience measurement? Audience measurement is basically the ability, uh, ability to, to gather business intelligence metrics in the physical world. That means to say, how do you get information out in the open? That is basically what I meant talking about today. And, uh, and the solution that you can use is basically, when you do audience measurement, it can help you to improve the volume and attributes of your inbound visitors. People are coming into your store or coming into your vicinity. And also, it also can also create attractiveness to your store or the assortment of products that you have on display. And most important at this point of time is how do you experience customer experience? How do you gauge customer experience, whether they're having a pleasant experience in your store or they're not happy at your store or they're perpetually angry or they couldn't be bothered? And more important that, you know, a lot of people today, especially the media owners and advertisers, they're spending a lot of money on advertising, but very much, very less is spent on basically on advertising audience reporting. So this is something that, you know, how your audience respond to your ad, whether they like your ad or whether they engage in your ad or whether they're looking at it. These are something that, you know, to, to think about that you can make so that, you know, it adds ROI to your uh, campaign or your advertisement ad spend. So what, how we do this is basically very simple, uh, not simple uh, five years ago, you know, when the advent of, you know, of uh, AI coming into the, into the picture and companies like us and many other companies also are looking at how they use artificial intelligence to solve their everyday problems. So this is something that I would really like to share with you as something that you can take away. So what AI we use is basically is to analyze video feeds that can produce Date anonymous data. That means to say we don't capture your image. Your image is not used, you know, and stuff like that. So we'll be using your your facial expression and your face the, uh, profile to give uh, to give you information on attributes, uh, attendance, and also your behavior. And more important is your sentiments and your accuracy span. That means to say attention span with an accuracy of close to about ninety five percent. This is how AI has developed already. So with this, we'll be able to generate metrics, information that will count your visitors and gather what kind of visitors you're coming, whether they are male or female, whether they're Asians or otherwise. And at the same time also, how long are they staying in your store, in your area? How long are they waiting for us to be served? And also the attention spend to spend KPIs that you look at. And today you look at content displayed in various digital media or especially for the outer home media, is basically is to show the right content based on your audience through attributes and also the current business conditions. It's no point showing advertisements on products that is designed for a, maybe for a child to an old person. You know, it may not be relevant. You know, or you know, if you want to sell, uh, you know, shoes uh, to a certain uh, segment of the population, you can target it. So rather than simply, you know, what they say, you know, just display it, you know, in a loop. And most important, every company today has got some form of business intelligence. So with business intelligence is basically, you can feed this particular information that you get to give you more into, into your business intelligence that you already have with accurate and relevant data that helps you in your business or understand your customer better, or you can plan your business, whatever products and service that best suits your customer's needs. And what are the benefits of using uh, analytics? And what we use is what is known as computer vision. Computer vision is something like, you know, training your brain. You know, your eye can only see what your mind knows. Okay, if your brain doesn't know it's a dog or a cat, you won't be able to analyze, even you look at it many times. So this is how we learn as a child. So the same thing, artificial intelligence uses computer vision, I mean, using cameras to identify an object and tell your brain that this is a cat or a dog. That is what you have learned. So this is how we are translating this into a machine. So what you get to know is basically get to know your venue traffic, your customers traffic, uh, your demographics, and you also can also optimize your human resource, human resource uh, and evaluate your employee performance. 
let's say you have uh, 10 uh, employees, you can gauge each other's performance by the number of people they attend to and the conversion rate of the sales. This is something that you can do. So the guy, you know, with that number of people, he can have a higher conversion rate. That is a good employee you want to keep him. And also, you also can find out things like, you know, how do you explain to the customer? Are they happy in your store? Are they angry in the store? Or they are, you know, uh, you know, are they faithful in your store? These are seven common human emotions that people display, which you can pick up and say, if people are happy in your store, then you're doing a great job. Okay. And also you can use it whenever you got a new product, you want to test a new product, you want to get customers' feedback. How do you do? You can look at the customer's reaction. Most of the time, people won't fill up forms, people won't fill up surveys and stuff like that. They rather come and sniff in it and they smile and they like it. And then, then whether they take that particular product to the uh, to the sales point uh, for, for this, to the sales counter. These are something that you can look at using computer vision. And of course, leverage on your digital out of home ad space. Since all of you are looking at digital media, so this is something that you can look at it. Today, we look at all the digital space in whichever places that you go to, it's running in a loop. You see the same thing over and over again, you know, seven digital signs showing you the same thing. But what if, if you can show you something that, you know, specific for you, all right? Later, I'll share a video, what you can do with it and how you can expand, it. basically to expand your mind, just to, you know, to give you information, what's it out there, okay? And uh, what you need to basically, uh, everybody looking for real time data. So this is what you need. You need to know as it happens. No point giving you data one month ago or one year ago. So you need real time. So this, you can give it, you know, and provide it either in, in a mobile app or in a customized dashboard. And more important is basically to understand whether your visitors and how long they visit and how long they stay. Something that, you know, let's say right now you have a sales staff and at the same time you find that the volume increase in number of visitors. So, and you have, and you have a, a benchmark, one sales staff to service maybe five customers. So you find that, you know, there are more than that. So you may be able to allocate people from other places with less busy to the main point so that you don't lose. So uh, lose, you don't squander your marketing efforts or they don't squander your customers visiting in your store. And more important is basically to calculate and count food traffic. Where is it coming in? You know, then you want to display certain things where you've got, you know, a lot of food traffic. You can, again, you can tell your customer, uh, your supplier, and say, if I put it here, there's a high probability, you know, that, you know, people will buy because there's a greater number of people. So this is basically statistical. Uh, and, and you can do it. You can, and it also can classify your food details, whether by age or gender. You find more females in this particular area, maybe you can put female uh, desired products or male desired products or children's desired products, you know? And, and, um, and you also can measure people's length and average length of stay in your store or in your vicinity. So if it is staying in your store a bit longer, there's a high probability they will purchase something, okay? And uh, some of the tools currently not available at this point of time at the digital uh, out of home measurement insight is basically, you know, customers are asking, especially advertiser asking, I'm spending so much X dollars in advertising. How do I calculate my ROI or digital ad spend? I mean, you can, you can, you can look at it. People give you a rough estimates based on people in that particular locality, any point of time, but they won't be able to tell you the cost per impression, per thousand impressions, and also how many people are actually looking at it, how long they're looking at it, and what is their emotional response to the uh, digital display that you're uh, presenting, and what is their reaction to it, and whether your right uh, targeted audience are being engaged. And of course, things like TRP is a very important mode of calculation, basically very much for the advertising industry, okay? And see some facts and figures today, we talk about you know, how digital out of home helps in basically in influencing customer behavior, purchase patterns. These are statistics you know, uh, compiled by uh, Nielsen. Uh, so if you're talking about this is basically now with the pandemic is over and you find that a lot of, you know, a lot of pent up desires coming into place. You know, uh, people and retailers are forecasting pre-Christmas and coming festivities in 2022. They're looking at something like 58 billion in predicted pre-sales alone. That is the anticipated about 11.3 percent, you know, uh, increase in pre-pandemic levels. And of course, like you know, we always find that we see digital media everywhere. You drive along the road, you see digital signboards, and uh, some. I don't know whether you guys are uh, uh, concentrating on the road or looking at digital media, but more or less, you find that we are at the traffic sign they spam you. So you find that you know, uh, outdoor influences shoppers at the right time. 
So the average time spent on media with media primer to a shopping occasion the same day in minutes, the high, the lowest is in magazines and the maximum is obvious like is on the internet, like, you know? And uh, of course, you know, you find that outdoor influences uh, shoppers prior to purchase. 61% of the percent, you know, shoppers, you know, will be exposed, you know, to out of home in an hour prior to visiting a retail store. So in fact, when you're walking from your uh, home to the MRT station, getting on the MRT station, going to the mall, more or less, you know, we see a lot of this uh, outdoor uh, digital uh, media being displayed. So the, uh, there's a chance that, you know, 61% uh, of them will be exposed more in uh, digital outdoor media compared to magazines or even the internet for the newsletter. So in terms of outdoor also influences online and mobile retail actions. There's a 2.5 times more online activity per dollar spent to deliver out by outdoor compared to other offline media. Okay, that means to say even in terms of sales, there's a high uplift of 17% in smartphone brand action when exposed to outdoor. That means you see something in the outdoor on a digital signboard, you go and look into the Google using a smartphone to Google it to find out where the best offer or where you can get it at the nearest location where you are. These are things that you can, uh, these are things that how outdoor also influences your online and your mobile retail actions. So this is something that we, uh, if it's available that you can, how we, this technology is being used is to help, is to do real-time multi-phase detections. You can look at it, you know, uh, whether it's a male, this particular, let's see, we can look at multiple people. This is basically a digital sign looking at you, okay? You know, whether it's a male, whether a female, even, even a female who's wearing a hijab, you, and if you're doing targeted ads and this female is looking at it, you can advise her on uh, Muslim-friendly products, uh, halal stores, you know, uh, halal restaurants. These are things that you can promote based on the demographics of this person, okay? And this is all real time. No point giving you data, a week old, a day old, an hour old. The guy is already gone, right? So this is something that how you visualize it in real time using dashboards and some of the deployment uh, use cases that you can put it in bus stations, malls, retail outlets, subway stations, and you get all this data real time. So this is something that helps you to make uh, creative decisions where it helps you to improve your business uh, capability and also to plan uh, in terms of how you're, going to, how you're going to run your business by itself. So in, in, in a nutshell, we're talking about is basically some of the solutions for three common uh, digital out of home challenges. One is audience measurement, which I mentioned to you very much is that every digital sign you pass by, like I mentioned earlier, is running in a loop. Right? You stand there, you know, if all of them, and if you go to Bukit Bintang or this place, you find that, you know, there are seven or eight digital sign bots. As you walk, all of them showing you the same stuff. So it's basically, you know, it just, just for show, but it's no value. People are not looking at data to see whether your clients are engaged. Or if you pass by something that, you know, there's a campaign going on in the store inside the mall and you say it's happening now. There's a probability based on your age and gender and this particular product appeals to you. You tendency there's a probability that you will go into the store and buy. This is how you look at it. So at the same time also, you can also, like I mentioned, targeted sales campaign. This is what I'm talking about. That helps you to improve your spot revenue. So you can also can say some of our clients are saying, oh, hi, I have this ad, you know, I got three mail ads. Which one do I run first? I say the one that pays you the most. Huh? So you can tell him uh, when this mail comes in, you run this ad first, then followed by this. So this is how you can prioritize your ad rather than having a repetitive ads. And then you can apply something like discriminated pricing. And most important, ads today, they don't interact between content and, and audience. They simply run only, you know. And at the same time also, if you can have interaction with your audience and you'll be able to gauge the ad impact, whether people are impactful, whether, you know, with basing, seeing the ad, whether they really go into the store or whether your sales go up. It helps at the same time also, you know, if you're going to launch a new ad campaign, you can also test it out and see whether people are disgusted by it or angry by it so that you can prevent ad campaign disasters. So interactive, uh, uh, triggering interactive content to specific targets in real time is using a specified rule engine. So if we say that, you know, uh, if it, there are 10 people in front of the digital screen, there are 66% uh, 
uh, six of them are females of that particular age group that this particular ad is targeted. So you can push that ad to them and target the six person instead of talking to the entire selling some other item that's totally unrelevant. But all these are not possible some years ago, but technology has caught up. Okay, you have technology whereby you'll be able to, uh, you know, uh, for digital solution where we put devices on each digital signboard, which will be able to push real time media. But the digital content can come in from the entire uh, content management system. So you can scale it either from a small business or a large business, depending very much on the budget that you can afford. And basically, what we look at is basically using big data analytics to add value for advertisers and also media owners, and also for retail owners as well, retail shops as well. And you can use, you know, currently you have, you know, currently you're already experiencing it. You have ads being pushed to you uh, in your mobile devices. So these are things that you can do on geolocated promotions that offer redemptions and offers on QR codes. Something that you can do to market, since you all are looking at digital marketing, is something that you can explore. So the next uh, ad uh, video I'm going to share with you is basically this tag is basically uh, with uh, which is one of your, our partners, uh, tech partner that we work with very closely, and they just launched this about two years, two weeks ago. Some of the new toolkits, a new uh, application, a new uh, APIs that we can work on. Which I hope, which after seeing this ad, you'll be able to trigger some thought process how you can apply it in your own businesses, or you can even, you know, we're looking at starting up a business by itself you can look at it you know, in a very positive way. So let me share this with you. Hi, welcome to Shannon's Cafe. How can I help you? Can I have a cheeseburger with a side of onion rings, please? Would you be interested in our popular toppings for cheeseburger like bacon and fried onions? Yeah, let's do it. Done. Added cheeseburger with bacon and fried onions. What else? What protein options do you have? We have multiple options. I recommend the double protein burger. Would you like that? Do you have any vegetarian options? I can get you a black bean patty instead. Would you like that? Sure. Okay. I have added double protein burger with black bean patty to your cart. What else? Do you have any sides? We have these three vegetarian items. French fries, onion rings, and fried pickles. What would you like? I'll have the French fries instead of the onion rings, please. Sure. Would you like some garlic on it? Yes, please. Okay. I have added French fries with garlic to your cart. What else? What salads do you offer? We have market salad, cob salad, fruit salad, and side salad. Side salad is popular with our cheeseburger. I'll do the side salad. All right, it is sunny out there. Would you like to add some drinks? I recommend our lemonade. Sure, I'll have a cola. We have two options, diet cola and regular cola. Which one would you like? I'll take the latter, please. Adding regular cola. Anything else? That's it. Thank you. Okay. Your total bill is $24.46. Your food will be available shortly. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. I hope you enjoyed it. So uh, that's my presentation for today's afternoon. Uh, if there's any questions, you know, uh, I'll be happy to address them. Thank you very much. Thank you, Albert. Thank you uh, for running us through uh, the technology to, to kind of real time optimize capabilities as well as uh, uh, the immediate opportunities for uh, digital OOH. Uh, we, we, the questions are coming in, it's, uh, it's on fire. So let's uh, go on to the questions. Hi, so we have the first question by Faisal. He asks how to actually do AI machine learning. Ah, okay. <laughs> All right. Um, I think first of all, I know first of all, you, you have to understand some computer programming at this point of time. Okay. Uh, and the most common languages that we talk about is basically on C++ and, uh, and Python. And also you have a lot of uh, machine learning, machine learning uh, uh, freeware that's available. 
uh, companies like Google, you know, they make it available uh, public to the public, you know, which you can go and learn on things like TensorFlow. You know, these are basically on using uh, convolutional neural networks or you can use uh, recurring neural networks. These are all available online. We can go for courses. Even Cloudera provides some of these courses. But at the same time also, it's nothing like, you know, getting your own device and uh, using them. And a lot of uh, devices that you can buy, you know, uh, which is below less than 500 ringgit, where you can run uh, AI applications. So some of you guys who are students out there, you know, you can invest in uh, uh, Raspberry Pi, you know, uh, that is basically a small device with camera will cost you less than 500 ringgit, where you'll be able to run uh, ML uh, frameworks like the TensorFlow and also run computer vision applications on it. Okay, thanks for answering that so in depth. I uh, hope that answers your question, Faisal. Uh, we have another question from Alex. What's the definition of OTS opportunity to see and how is it being tracked or calculated? Oh, uh, this is this. Okay, uh, opportunity to see is basically if you're standing in front of a digital screen or you're standing in front of this uh, ad, you look at it. So we look at your eyeball contact. Then you say, how long are you looking at it? In milliseconds. Is computing in milliseconds. So if you're, you're looking at it, you know, if the ad is run for three seconds, say, let's say for five seconds, and your, your attention, you're looking at it is four seconds. That's where we look at it in terms of calculating your opportunity individually. Then we also know uh, whether you're a male or whether you're a female and what is your age group. And we also can pick up your emotional response, whether you're happy with the ad or you're angry with the ad or you're disgusted by it. So these are things that, you know, it fits back that gives you how effective uh, a digital signboard or a advertisement campaign is being uh, utilized. Okay, awesome. Um, hope that answers your question, Alex. So we have another question from Afik. He asks, uh, wouldn't it be an infringement of privacy if we are using computer vision on our customer? Uh, I think we, uh, basically I do sit in the booking committee we're coming up with a new PDPA, okay, uh, by MCMC. So one of the things that we do, we don't actually, uh, we analyze your image, but we create vectors. Let's say right now, if I want to know uh, Faisal, or uh, sorry, Faisal, if you use your name, um, is here in this particular locality for the last one hour. So what I do, I create a vector of your image is basically numerous, is basically numeric value of your image. So then and the next time you are in that same locality, I can match that image with a numeric vector that we'll be able to say that it's the same person. So in, in actual sense, it doesn't breach privacy laws. We don't capture your face. We don't uh, keep your image and stuff like that. So it's completely anonymous. So we know it's a female, uh, age uh, 25, uh, and, she's been, and, uh, and she's particularly happy looking at this ad or happy in this entire store event that she's there. The one hour she spent there, you know, she's happy most of the time. And certain times she looked very upset, angry with some of those, uh, you know, employees. This I think devices information that we give to you. Okay. Understand. Okay. Um, hope that answers your question, Afik. Um, so we have not really a question, but um, a, a statement from Ying Ying He. She she or he says that real time is important, but you still need to learn historical data to learn. Um, and Hafi Zudin asked if uh, this is from, I'm not too sure how to pronounce this, N-V-I-D-E-A keynote, right? Yep. Ah, okay. Uh, uh, let me, yeah, I can answer these questions for you guys. I think in terms of, you see data is basically, we store a lot of data. We store them in a data lake. Of course, historical data is pretty important. So you'll be able to look at your trend analysis. We can create a time series, uh, visualization and stuff like that. Then uh, in terms of uh, real time, of course, it's real time, like, you know, uh, we don't throw away the data. This data is value. The new gold is a new gold. in like, like oil is the new oil today. So the more information you have, the more accurate information you have, you can make better informed and accurate decisions. Okay. Uh, that is what, uh, look at the other questions, uh, what you were talking about. Um, so Hafiz Zudin asked if this is from the NVIDEA team. Oh, yeah, and NVIDIA is basically, it's our partner. Basically, we do a lot of solutioning for them. Uh, at this point of time, we are doing certification in terms of intelligent video analytics. They look at the global solutions all over the world. 
what NVIDIA do is that basically they are basically the number one AI company in the world. Today. They build a lot of uh, AI compute, uh, supercomputers. Uh, I think uh, I think in a matter of time, even our Malaysian with government is looking at things like this to set up so that you know companies, uh, or young people or new startups can come in and have access to this kind of high performance compute that helps them to process millions of data, terabits of data uh, in, in, in a couple of hours or a couple of seconds. So this is what we are doing. We are, we are, a lot of them are pioneering. So yes, uh, NVIDIA is the number one. And we're happy to be in partner with them. And we use a lot of their GPU cards for GPU for their compute, both for analytics as well as for computer analytics as well. Hope that answers your question. Okay, thank you, Albert. Um, we have a rather more of like a concern from one of the uh, attendees here, Offman. Um, he says that basically AI and machine learning for small packs is not a necessity yet. It will increase our end product and customers will run away. And uh, he also thanks you a lot for your very interesting presentation. Oh, I, I, I don't know whether people, I think, with, uh, yeah, I think people, people do not know about AI and stuff like that. I think they're watching too many Terminator movies. <laughs> so uh, that sort of scares them, like, you know. So it's better of being using AI for responsibility, responsibility you see. You know, uh, some people are using AI, you know, uh, to filter out clothes of a, of, a, of, a, of a person. So these are not good, you see. But you can also use for good things to have your business value, uh, safety, uh, security, you know, and also maybe, you know, uh, in your homes. These are things that you can use AI in a positive way, like, you know. Okay. Thanks. Any other questions from the floor, Megan? Uh, no, we don't have any other questions. Okay. Uh, if there's no other questions, uh, again, thank you so much, uh, Albert, for taking us through uh, the capabilities as well as... Uh, maybe I've got a question for you. Mm. Um, currently, right now, uh, this particular technology uh, that you have, uh, is there anywhere in KL right now that's actually using this already? Yes, there is. But if you want to see it, uh, we have an exhibit in uh, in uh, PetroScience under their tech lab session. That is basically, you know, uh, because the tech lab is using it to, to push, you know, a lot of, uh, they got a lot of uh, variety, a spectrum of visitors, different age groups. So when you go and stand in front of the digital screen, if you're a kid, we will show you advertisements that are, which particular area you can go to, we see robotics to play with, or, mm. or you know, or there are dinosaurs, you know, you can go there. So you can, that is in, available for public. La. Whereas the other clients, we can't tell you, la, you know, Sure, sure. Understand. No problems. Yeah, okay, yeah. I just thank you, thank awesome. you. So at least yeah. I can go check it out. Uh, at ah, yes, basically in tech lab, like, you know, So we also promoting our client as well. Like. PetroScience right. is subsidiary of Petronas is our client as well. Yes. So yes. you can go there and see it. Mm. Thank you, thank you, Abba, for the interesting presentation. Uh, if there's no more other questions, again, uh, thank you everyone. Uh, I really, really appreciate all of you uh, to be here. Uh, you actually invested the last uh, one and a half hours to close to two hours uh, with us during your lunch time. Really, really appreciate your time. Uh, thank you so much. So just want to remind all of you, uh, this is uh, so-called the day one of uh, this Digital Wednesday. So we're going to have another two more sessions next Wednesday and the following uh, Wednesday as well, which means the 1st and the 8th of December. So if you have not uh, signed up yet, please go to Malaysian Digital Association's Facebook page. There are links there. You can click on it. You can sign up uh, on the Eventbrite page. Um, just a sneak peek of what's happening uh, next week. So next week's uh, Wednesday, same time, uh, 12 to 2. Uh, we have got Huawei uh, coming in uh, to talk about the Harmony OS. Uh, and then uh, we have uh, going to talk about, uh, well, uh, the flavor of the, the decade, in this case, probably uh, NFTs and cryptos, right? Uh, and uh, we're going to have also uh, how this particular company, uh, which does uh, construction as well as renovation, leverage on the shared economy. And uh, on the 8th of December, uh, we have a person going to speak on EduTech. Uh, and then uh, we have got a, uh, another interesting person which uh, going to talk about uh, the, uh, the escape game, right? Uh, breakout uh, and how they leverage uh, the digital space. And lastly, we still have one more person who's going to talk about uh, the digital sports league. So uh, with that, uh, we thank you for your time again. Uh, so much uh, for, for this. So again, uh, for, uh, can you just give a, maybe a thumbs up to Albert uh, for his uh, session? I just go to your reaction button and just like me right here, I just give him a thumbs up. Thank you so much. So with that, uh
I've got no more things to add on. Uh, so thank you again for spending the last one and a half hours with us. Thank you on behalf of MDA. And I hope uh, to see uh, all of you, if not uh, more, to come by uh, next Wednesday, same time. So if you've not signed up, please go to Malaysian Digital Association FB and sign up then. With that, have a good lunch. Thank you. Bye-bye.